Welcome to Householders, a conversation about American life as Zen practice. I'm Inga Annie Wade. And I'm Kyosaku John Mitchell, and we're lay members of the Atlanta Soto Zen Center. How's your life been lately? There's a strange quality to it these days where the the, the situation that feels like normal is very chaotic and unpredictable and it's kind of mm-hmm. confusing. Like how like what is that how like am I used to uncertainty or chaos or something? Like is that the thing that feels normal or am I just settled into uh you know a sort of whatever happens happens kind of attitude and you know if it's if it's chaos fine and if it's order fine uh i don't know but you know my 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 eldest kid started daycare last week and immediately got sick and both kids are sick my wife is sick and i don't know if i'm sick or not and it's it's just like uh, it just it just there's like it never ends you know yeah of course it never ends like like it's life it doesn't end uh, until it ends (laughs) <laughs> it's not over till it's over yeah so it's th- there's a lot of just sort of uh moments of okay this is it and i can kind of feel that way too yeah it's weird yeah it's kind of weird how we're like i feel like a lot of the times we're going through the same like kind of cycles it doesn't make any sense but no but but <laughs> have you do you feel that way often with other people because i kind of do now that you mention it like just that these phases don't just apply to one person's life yes but i mean i i think people do go through different things at different times but i think i don't know i feel like when you're like connected to someone then i don't know things start to sync up a little bit more (laughs) Mm -hmm. i don't know how though i don't know how that works that doesn't make any sense really But I mean, it does like for like me and my husband, because we're like around each other all the time, obviously, like whatever affects him is going to affect me and vice versa. Like it's almost impossible to separate the two because we live together and we see each other every single day, which is kind of what had been going on a couple of weeks ago. Um, And he wasn't sleeping very well, which means I wasn't sleeping very well. And then chaos ensued. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I, you know, because I have a weak immune system, as soon as I wasn't sleeping, I got an infection from a bu- bug bite. Ugh. And then that, like, inflammation from that bug bite, which I'm very sensitive to inflammation, I exercised with weights for the first time in, like, forever. And then I injured my knee. And then oh, I was man. hobbling around for a whole week. And then Ian got sick, too. It was... <laughs> <laughs> And that's how fragile this balance is. Every single time, like, it kind of comes back to this sort of, like, b- balancing life and balancing things to preserve your precepts and everything. And sometimes it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and so, like, falling off the balance beam has sort of a chain reaction quality to it usually, right? Like, one thing goes wrong and the, the, and that causes another thing to go wrong and, and on yeah. and on. But but it's not. But life isn't like that all the time. No, it feels like a disruption to me anyway. When fall when I fall off, and you know it's unusual and upsetting, and then it sort of settles out. But I think it's like I think that all we can hope for is to not be as upset by falling off over time, mm-hmm. mm. because really the norm is sometimes you're on and sometimes you're not. Right. That's what's even though we see it as like, this is the baseline. This is the normal, like when we're feeling like pretty decent and then the abnormal is falling off. Really, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's like you're just in a constant state of being a balanced and not being a balanced. And you have to be learn to be okay with not being imbalanced when you do and not get overly happy and excited when you are in balance. Mm. Yeah, that's a very wise perspective. But what ha- what is the deal with this sort of synchronization of on and off uh balance between people? Like you're 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 right, like of course the person that you live with or the people that you live with, like you're going to 
you're going to roll with the punches together. But, or, you know, especially when like getting sick is involved or being not being able to sleep is involved or whatever. But there's the, there, certainly there are cycles or systems connecting you and me. Like we're meeting at this regular time. Uh, every week we live pretty close together we live in the too, same so place. i'm sure there's yeah like the wi- political and environmental factors and, that, right. that affect us equally the weather the temperature like the the if you think about it there are actually quite a lot of vast phenomena affecting both of us even in kind of a local way yeah and and you know a lot of those you could you could wave your hands a little bit and be like sure it makes sense that we would both get sick and sleep deprived at the same time or do you and my kids would get sick and sleep deprived or whatever it is and 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 okay that's fine but like the, this seems to i i see this pattern with people that i don't live in the same place with even though like you know i'm with people that i'm in touch with who live far away and so you can still draw like bit like hand wavy images of like you know, the world, like we're all, it's all summer in the whole Northern hemisphere and whatever. Yeah. But uh, what, what I begin to suspect when I start to think like this is, you know, human tendency toward pattern, finding patterns, seeing, you know, the Virgin Mary Mm -hmm. and your grilled cheese and, and like thinking that everything is connected as a, just a sort of human cognitive bias that must have some helpful function of, Oh, sure. Absolutely. You know, keeping people like coordinating groups and cooperation or making people care about each other. Like there are good reasons to to err on the side of assuming everything is magically connected. But, you know, it's hard to say. No, I totally I totally know what you mean. Um, Yeah, I think it could be a little bit of both, you know, that Mm -hmm. we probably we're interconnected in ways that we don't understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, maybe like birds, for example, act differently in different situations. Like if there's going to be an earthquake, like actually they're starting to be able to predict earthquakes with certain birds, you Whoa. know, because they act a certain way uh-huh. uh, before earthquakes happen. And there, it's actually more accurate than some of the instruments we have. Wow. Don't quote, don't quote me on that because um, I didn't just do thorough research before this, but that is what I've heard. Um, the same with other kinds of like pheno- weather phenomenons and stuff. So, you know, I think that things affect us probably and we don't realize it, but we, you know, in our, in our lives, we try to draw those, those, those conclusions about our moods and our behaviors. And if we can't understand it, like maybe there are like weather phenomenons or something <laughs> like that happening, like the, the, the Sahara dust cloud is here and that's affecting yeah whatever but i don't see it that way i see it like oh well i didn't sleep i slept one hour less yesterday and i'm annoyed about this project so that much be, must be it you know mm-hmm. right <laughs> yeah <But> who knows <laughs> and who knows Actually. like where the cause and the effect are like which which of these things you know like it's it it's flowing both ways all the time it's too complex to measure and yeah it, my suspicion is just like my totally naive human suspicion is the number of factors affecting us like you and me individually just as examples on like a purely physical basis like the atoms in our bodies and and like the electrical clouds and chemical reactions in our bodies is like an in, it's it's like almost all of them almost all of them are the same right like almost all like the there the the number of things that are different about our lives is much much smaller than the number of things that are the same and i mean that in terms of like things that could be physically measured about them, you know, even down to, you know, where we are on the planet. But like the, the, there are so, like so many more than that. Just, and it's, it's just a matter of scale. Yeah. But we, we coordinate our lives on this very particular scale of like, you know, human activity and, and sleep and sickness and all, all these things that sort of knock us off over the yeah. course of our daily lives. Like those are, they're just part of life. I mean, it's 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 hard to to point to what exactly it is about getting sick that makes me think 
so much deeper about what's happening than just like the simple facts of it. But like getting sick always feels like a sign of something to me. Oh, it absolutely is, in my opinion. And, and yeah, maybe I could be reading too much into it. But like, I know that like, since my immune system is weak, I take immune suppressive drugs. Like, I know that I probably not that I, I don't want to blame myself for it, because sometimes it was just out of my control. But like, there are factors environmentally or, um, you know, within my own like control, eating and sleeping and exercising and stuff that, that uh, you know, are are not where they need to be if I do get sick. But mm-hmm. yes, not sleeping is a great example. I'm definitely, <laughs> and most of the time I do get sick if I, if I don't sleep because that's another way that my immune system is not like getting the proper things it needs. So there's at least that sign like, mm-hmm. okay, high stress too. High stress can create problems with your immune system. And so that's, you know, that's a way. I think, you know, what a good like group exercise like example of how things affect people equally even if they're not in the same areas or whatever we're all in different areas of the world and surely the pandemic is affecting us differently but across the board you could see like sort of these patterns that were happening to different types of people Mm -hmm. um you know uh in the beginning there were a, a lot of women that were uh missed a period or their periods were late Mm-hmm. when the pandemic started and probably be because of stress. I think this was anecdotal, but a lot of um, gynecologists were saying that like more people were reporting uh, problems with their period. Mm-hmm. So that's an example. And yeah, so I, I think that we respond as people to things similarly, like, you know, a stress, is, I guess the pandemic is a high stress environment. So mm-hmm. we're all going to experience that together. And a lot of people gained weight during the pandemic, as mm-hmm. another example. Um, and that, you know, that does make me think like, wow, we are really similar. Like, we like to really focus in on all the differences that we are as like people, like culturally and language and everything. And then we're like stuck with the same situation. And we kind of all it all affects us in the same way more or Mm -hmm. less Mm -hmm. Mm. i mean the global nature of the pandemic is a kind of a rare thing i guess it's increasingly common that there are there are big events that take place that can affect everyone on earth but it's very rare for one that that lasts over a year right it's really interesting to think about the synchronizing effect of that especially for the period of time where you know such huge numbers of people were all you know under lockdown sort of experiencing the same kinds of conditions and the attendant you know psychological harms that come from things like isolation and you know uncertainty and economic uh insecurity like uh everybody was kind of going through the same exact thing for a while and you know it's unwinding at very different speeds in very different places, but the length and intensity of that event, if you can think of it, think of it all as one event is surely still affecting all of us in some ways, uh, at the same time, even still. And like, you know, the echo, the memory of what this, what the last year was like, it's going to last a long time. And, you know, I'm not saying this because it's good or because it's bad. And it's a lot of probably a lot of different uh, good and bad things at once. But like, we're all a lot more coordinated, synchronized uh, as a species on this whole planet uh, now and in the aftermath of the last year, maybe than we were before. And, uh, you know, the it's i'm not i'm not going to say some new agey thing about that being like an opportunity for us to come together or something like that but but certainly there is to assume about other people and what they're going through and th- there is a basis for compassion for other people in that right that like you know just in some deep way what what somebody has been going through at least some of it uh even though it manifest very differently like there are some such intense things about it that we're all the same for all of us yeah i mean in what what do you what have you been 
what was, what is the aftermath of the pandemic been like for you? Yeah. I feel like for for me, it's just I'm having to relearn and readjust to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, it still doesn't feel over to me uh, for a few reasons. I mean, I notice a lot of stories about vaccinated people still getting sick, breaking through, and it's still on the level of like anecdotal and and sensational stories that are rising above a baseline of like some more scientific level headed people saying this is statistically not unusual. You know, this is going to happen when everyone on earth is, you know, in the test, in the control group or in the, sorry, in the, in the experiment, uh, you know, there, it's not a hundred percent effective in every case. Um, but there's still that sort of feeling of trouble. Um, and then there's the fact that my kids aren't vaccinated, right. Cause they're too little. And that that's, been sort of weighing on me and yet you know we're gathering with people we had my brother's birthday party at his house last weekend uh and you know like i said my daughter started daycare she's she's going to school uh and that should feel like this huge relief it should feel it should feel like you know, like society is coming back. That was a chicken, by the way. They're right outside my window. That was a chicken. Yeah, those are our chickens. We have four chickens. I thought it was a child. No, nope, it was a chicken. And there's gonna be there's gonna be chickens on this podcast now. That's definitely gonna be something that uh, will be a regular feature. They're not even that close to your house. No, no, they're right outside this window. If I opened oh, the are? shades of this window, I would be able to see them looking in, probably. So, so that that's that's gonna happen. That's who you're that that's who you're hearing when you hear that sound. Um. So, you know, it should feel like society's coming back based on what's happening in our day-to-day lives. Like we've got a school to send a kid to. We've, we're seeing, you know, friends and family uh, in large numbers now. We're planning, you know, concerts and things like going out and doing things. Um, but it doesn't feel... I have never had, not once in any of these situations, a sensation of like, ah... We're back. We're back to normal. Everything's okay again. Uh, you know, I, it doesn't. It, it it still feels risky, um, but it also just still feels uncertain in terms of the future. You know, I'm not sure that I'm ever going to. I mean, I, I shouldn't say never. You know, humans can get used to quite a lot of weird situations, and, and you know, it, enough time will sort of deaden any memory, but. Uh, I, I don't, I, I think that before this, this pandemic, I had a lower level of um, uncertainty or preparation for unusual emergent circumstances than was necessary. Adjusting to the pandemic was hard. And, and now I feel like I'm just sort of, uh, I, this is just an, anx- an anxious personality type I recognize, but like, I'm sort of wondering what comes next, you know, you know, like I'm not expecting like vacation party time to happen right now. I'm I'm expecting like uh, some other bizarre development to come up soon. I was just having a little bit of that vacation party time and it's exhausting. I didn't remember it being <laughs> that tiring. Uh-huh. Um, like, you know, talking to people you haven't talked to in a year and a half and being like, uh, what's up? (laughs) And like not knowing if they lost someone to COVID or like, you know, there's, there's just, you know, everybody wants to get back to normal, but like it could turn dark so fast. Yeah. And I haven't been on social media. I don't even know what's happened to people. Yeah. (laughs) I just kind of tuned that all out. You know, um, it was, it was becoming a huge stressor and, Mm -hmm during the pandemic. I don't know. There was a lot of politics. There was a lot of like, oh, you know, he didn't wear his mask kind of thing. Uh And I'm like, all right, well, can't control people. So I'm sorry they didn't wear their mask. But, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's I don't know. It was it was really a really stressful time for um, for politics, probably not as bad as the last four years, but um I still I don't, I don't know i wasn't as in tune to it so i couldn't tell you but yeah. you got to do what you got to do 
you have you have to like information about what's happening out there is 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 not largely not actionable information in terms of you know what you what information you need to sort of get through a day and and interact with the people that you really do interact with you know so many of the interactions the things we count as interactions like because of the internet are unnecessary interactions so like wouldn't happen if we weren't all just using the internet as an activity you know it's yeah. not like bumping into somebody in the street no but i think you're right i think there must have been something about the pandemic that like really triggered these last like sort of attempts to, uh, at segregating people politically uh-huh. or something because i remember i had a, i had an argument with my brother-in-law and i was like i don't argue with anybody but it was mainly like him arguing with me and i was just asking questions but it affected me a lot and I'm like, you know, if I want to have a relationship with family and stuff that I don't necessarily agree with, then I cannot be on these, these, uh, I can't be reading this stuff that's so sensationalized um, and drinking the same poison as them and expect to maintain that relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but, the, but it's like when everybody's on that drug, you know, those informational drugs it's like you you can't you can't connect with them with when you're not on it either you know it's like they're they're gone they're down the rabbit hole and it's it's e- either you participate in the hallucination or you or you don't and there's no basis of contact like it's it, it's i mean this is actually a very interesting corollary to the kind of stuff we were talking about at the beginning in terms of stuff that syncs up the human population that you know. totally syncs up the human population at least. yeah at least in a given country, yes. but also across, you know, globally too, there's c- certain things that happen as well, like the pandemic. But yeah, like I, I'm not like synced up to that, but if everybody's doing it, like you said, it's still going to affect you a little bit because yeah. the people around you are being affected by it. Yeah. And, and the, it's, it's tempting to draw a separation between this and other kinds of phenomena because it's like, this is all made up. It's all stupid. It's just cartoons, you know, like people are, people are, are, are not looking at the real world. They're looking at this caricature, but there's no, there's no point in drawing that distinction because, you know, if you want to get real Buddhist about it, it's like all of this is a a cartoon hallucination, like online, offline doesn't matter. Like we're all forming, you know, uh, samsaric bubbles around ourselves about all of it uh and from that point of view it's also like what's the difference you know like the the, that the media environment is real to the people who are in it and it's real to you because it's real to the people around you so you know it has to be dealt with it has to be confronted and you know just just in the same way that you know uh the Sahara dust cloud can like cause us to lose sleep and get sick or whatever, you know, the same exact thing happens online and, you know, some sort of informational dust cloud, some hazardous piece of mimetic warfare, uh, you know, disturbs everybody and throws off their behavior all at once. And then, you know, you're swept up in it, uh, whether you like it or not. And the, the same skills must apply to sort of how you, how you handle that. It's just the exact thing you said at the beginning. It was like about the n- true normal being sometimes on, sometimes off. You know, it's, it's, it's not that stable is normal and then thrown off is unusual. It's, you know, your the, the ability to walk through the world, uh, knowing that that kind of stuff can happen, um, is, it's the only way to survive regardless of, of, uh, where the, you know, the virus comes from. Yeah, and I think the trick is not feeding it. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of those things, like I don't, like you were saying, you know, cartoon hallucination, I think, you know, a lot of that is true. Um, but, you know, there, there are people with real problems and people, you know, dying and refugees and, you know, people being mistreated. I don't think that, I don't want to say that, oh, you should just shut all that out and never listen to any of that. I think that those are important but I think it's also important not to get upset about them. I know that sounds mm. like totally backwards. Like, well, how are you going to do anything if you don't get upset about them? I think you still can. I think you, you're you still going to do what you're going to do. Like, 
whether I'm upset about something or not, I'm still going to vote in the election in the way that I feel like is morally right. Um, and I'm going to do the the things and support the the companies or the the pol politicians or whoever I can do in my local community in a way that I think is morally right. But I I can honestly do that better if I if my emotions aren't like hung up in all of that. Yeah. The emotions are how you get manipulated by the forces of information warfare, you know, like I'm, I'm sorry to keep putting it in such like whack job terms, but, <laughs> but the, I, I, I'm, what I'm saying is I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's possible to respond to a fact from a basis of stability and, and calm and discernment. Uh, and, and it's, it's, also possible to respond to it from a place of emotional upheaval, but which is more likely to cause a mistaken response or have unintended consequences. And, you know, the, there is a certain activist argument that getting angry is sort of the precursor to mass uprising about something and that we need that sometimes. And I think uh, that it makes sense if, if what you're, if what you want is just like complete upheaval, like if this situation is so intolerable that everybody needs to just sort of throw their phone in a bush and just start rioting in the streets, like, yeah, anger and emotion is what you're going to want to fuel that. But it, it's just, it's just, it's just so much more likely, I think, to be, to happen in an uncoordinated way that when, when, when like powerful emotions are at work and that's what that's what we're kind of i i think that's what we're really talking about is like human coordination and how we how we yeah. find ourselves in the same situation and respond in uh coordinated ways and cooperative ways and you know like one huge surge of chaos where everybody's feeling something different but happens to be running in the same direction doesn't count to me you know in order to coordinate you have to communicate you know, there's been a lot of throughout history, maybe not a lot, but there's been enough uh, peaceful protests that have actually, you know, and peaceful movements that have actually like worked. Yeah. So I, I always hold out hope for that. Uh, but also I wonder as like Buddhists, if we, you know, have the 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 privilege or the, the moral duty to uphold the the calm state, the, you know, the what what are what are monks doing by meditating all the time you know and they 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 feel like that's that's all you have to do right so mm -hmm. the question is what are we doing by how are we contributing not by getting upset and not by you know uh creating this upheaval but just by being calm and being here Householders is a production of the Atlanta Soto Zen Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Silent Thunder Order. Find us on the web at aszc.org. Our sangha depends on your support. You can donate by PayPal to donate at storder.org. Gasho.